Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel to discuss all things of Yeshen and Jadot TV welcoming you back. Yes, South Africa is experiencing the second wave of the coronavirus. There's a new variant in South Africa. It's not the only variant in the world. There's another one in the UK. We'll discuss it shortly. What does this mean for aviation? Obviously, we've seen that the coronavirus over the past 11 to 12 months has had a huge impact in the industry. Has had a huge impact on aviation globally. Now, the new variant in the South African context was discovered in the provinces of KZN, Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. They are currently the hardest hit provinces right now, experiencing the second wave. The government has moved in to do what it can do. It has moved in to close beaches. It has moved in to restrict movement, to restrict uh, uh, gatherings, the number of people they can gather. And of course, we've seen civil society challenging these restrictions in courts, not being successful because I think the courts were rational in this way. They were able to realize that what the government was doing was simply a government trying to protect people. In other words, it was not a government that was just hell-bent on restricting civil liberties for no reason, but it was a government that was making all these restrictions or putting all these restrictions in place in order to protect the people of South Africa. South African scientists have a lot of experience dealing with HIV, so they have over the years built up enough skill and, and capacity to decode you know, the genome of uh, viruses. They used the same approach when they were decoding the genome of the new variant. They realized that there was, a, there was a change in the spike protein which allows the virus to attach more easily to human cells, hence the spread. It has made it more deadly than the previous virus that we have been dealing with the entire 2020 up to at least September. Now, once they had gathered that data, they then shared it with the WHO which then allowed scientists in the UK to revisit their databases. And only then did the UK scientists discover that indeed the UK itself has a second variant, a deadly variant as well. Uh, it's not just South Africa that has a second variant of the uh, coronavirus and mutation. Um, there's a South African mutation, then there's a UK mutation. Um, yeah, so that's how it worked. South African scientists uh, figured it out. They then shared this information with the WHO, the World Health Organization, which then allowed the UK scientists to go back to the drawing board and re-study their databases and they were able to then pick up these similar mutations in the UK. So on the aviation front, what does this mean? <coughs> Quite quickly, the United Kingdom went ahead to ban South African flights from entering the UK airspace. In other words, they felt the South African variant was more deadly, which is not necessarily supported by scientific evidence, but that's what the government up there felt. And so they sort of closed down the airspace to South African flights, put restrictions on flights coming from South Africa in order to protect their people. And then other countries followed suit, Germany, Switzerland, Turkey, Saudi Arabia did the same banning South African flights or putting restrictions on flights from South Africa and individuals from South Africa because of the new variant that South Africa is currently um, dealing with. Well, other countries followed suit as well and they banned um, flights from the UK. These are, you know, over 40 countries from Asia, from Europe, from the Caribbean, from the Middle East. They all banned flights or put restrictions on flights from the United Kingdom in order to stop the UK variant from spreading to their countries. Now, remember the UK variant is also now found in Denmark. It's also found in Australia and found in the Netherlands as well. So other countries went quite quickly to say, listen, we're shutting down our airspace to any flight from the UK or any individual that has flown in from the UK in order to prevent the spread of the UK variant from reaching all these other 40 countries that have put in place bans or restrictions on flights from the UK. It is obvious that while the aviation industry was hard hit in 2020, you know, by the coronavirus, this second wave and the emergence of these mutations uh, will, ha will hit it even harder than we have seen before. The question that begs an answer therefore is, is another lockdown looming? Is the closure of borders looming? You know, you've seen that governments, for economic reasons, have been very reluctant to close their borders. They've allowed things to operate, they've allowed things to continue, which is quite good for the aviation industry. But then again, the aviation industry can't be a conduit for more infections, for more spreading of 
um, or for increased uh, spread of the virus, whether it's the original one or the new variant. Why governments were reluctant to lock down their countries? It's obvious that if one government doesn't necessarily lock down its borders, another one will do it for them. Take the example of the UK. It has not necessarily shut down its borders, but over 40 countries from across the globe have shut down their borders to UK travelers or to flights from the UK in order to protect their own populations. So it's hard to say whether governments will eventually you know, um, um, overlook economic considerations and prioritize health considerations and close down their borders as a means to cab the spread of the virus. It, it's really hard to say, but uh, what's obvious is that no matter how reluctant countries are to shut down their borders, these flight restrictions and flight bans that are imposed by other countries from in, in respect of flights from specific territories are in fact essentially a form of a lockdown. So it's, it's hard to say whether we shall, we shall see a return of the hard lockdown where borders were specifically closed and no flights were allowed to enter particular airspaces. It's, it's hard to say, but it, it looks like with the mutations that are coming up now, um, it's not too far-fetched to assume that countries may eventually go back in, in that direction. And needless to say, this will impact the aviation industry even harder than the first, uh, you know, Im imposed the restrictions on the industry. I hope that was an informative uh, short piece and if it was, do click the like button below and do not forget to subscribe and to urge your colleagues and your acquaintances to subscribe. It's the only way we can grow this channel, it's the only way we can uh, make Africa great again, it's the only way we can disseminate aviation information to our community of aviators. And remember to keep adding those hours, whatever it is you're busy with, keep adding those hours. Because with every hour the cockpit beckons, every hour you invest in your goal, you get closer and closer to achieving that particular goal. Stay safe from COVID-19, stay safe from the second wave, stay safe from the new variant that's deadly, that's more infectious than the previous one. Until next time, Angela Jubia signing out and saying cheers.